After the leaves are picked and, and brought into the curing barns, each leaf is sewn one by one. Um, it has to be hung to dry. None of this is done artificially. Um, the reality is that, that sometimes uh, you know, the, the art of, of making a great cigar does ultimately begin with, with growing great tobacco. Without great tobacco, you can't do it. The tobacco going to the, the, the barn, no? and we have special equipment and special uh, checking every day you know, and every night, 24 hours for day. And the barn is uh, actually is modernized the ones that we are using, where you do not depend on the humidity or the temperature of the outside. You control the humidity and you control the temperature so that the leaves have a chance of losing the water content that they have slowly at the rate that you want. That will take about six weeks. And uh, they will start to become brown once that they use their water content, we start to bring them down and move it to the plant. And the tobacco sent to the processing plant. The processing plant, we supervision okay, what texture have in the leaf. No, what leaf is seco, what leaf is liso, what leaf is ligero, no? I'm divided in three different categories, this tobacco, and after processing for the fermentation. No? And the fermentation, that depends, okay, this seco, okay, it's more like tobacco, okay, need two and three and four months, okay, the viso, okay, is, I use, okay, six or seven months, and the ligero is possible eight, ten, or it's possible twelve months. The moisture and the tobacco leaves, when you put them on top of each other, uh, they will put pressure on each other and the tobacco will start to generate heat within itself and uh, it will the heat and the moisture will start a fermentation process which will make the tobacco leaves uh, smoother it will make it with less nicotine all the nutrients will be balanced and it will give you a smoother smoke. The acidity of it will be reduced. The acidity, the harshness will be smoothened. You have to be an artist. You have to know when to rotate. That's what they call rotate the pilon. And uh, whether to add more moisture, more water, how much to add, and uh, what's the change in the temperature. A lot of time when you're buying these tobaccos, some farmers, they're going to process it to the point that they feel that it's ready to be sold. That doesn't necessarily mean that it is ready to be rolled into a final cigar to be marketed. Usually what that means is when you get them into your factory, you have to have somebody who's a good judge of tobacco and look at it and say, you know what, I think that this needs more fermentation. I think that it needs X amount of days more fermentation. Fermenting, it's so critical. That can take can take a couple weeks, it can take several months, you know, and it just depends on the type of tobacco that you're using. This is again expertise that they have down at the factory through years and years of experience. El de the time that they take to ferment uh, the, the tobacco, it depends on how thin or how thick the leaves are. The thinnest leaves needs are approximately 30 days to be fermented completely. The thicker leaves needs about 90 days, even more, until it's finally perfectly fermented. Now it's important that the tobacco recovers all these uh, processes that it has gone through, and therefore it needs to rest. It's important to keep the tobacco in bales and uh, let them age in the bales for six months, some of them longer than that for a year, or yet uh, longer. The next step too is to come out with a blend that marries well 
um, the, the, the wrappers, the binders, the fillers, which ones go well together, which ones don't. In tobacco, there, there, are many, there are many different flavors that tobacco can give you. Each leaf is individual in and of itself. Even if it comes from the same farm, the reality is that each leaf may have a slightly different uh, taste than the other. We like to blend a lot of different tobaccos. And we, sometimes we're blending all one cigar that is from the same country. So there's a, a, just the variety is within the farms that are coming from, say, Nicaragua. But in a lot of cases nowadays, what we're doing is we're really blending the best tobaccos from multiple different countries to come up with a cigar that has a very consistent and pleasing taste. We test out so many hundreds of them, combinations. You can come out with thousands of combinations if you wanted to. Uh, but to find the right match, um, you just have to go out there and, and put them together. We have the factories just put together the samples of the different types. You can't just take any blend or you can't, you can come up with an idea if you'd like um, and see how it tastes. But, but truly you have to understand how each leaf will work with the different leaves in order to create a good blend. When you make a blend, it doesn't mean that that's the end of the blend. Uh, that's a challenge because you are dealing with a product with tobacco which is changing year after year, but you are trying to maintain the same taste profile, the same taste complexity, the same flavor, everything the same. So it's a continuing challenge. But what we are trying to strive is quality so that every cigar gives the utmost of the pleasure to the consumer. In order to reach, you know, in order to get to that point where you can have a blend of all the different tobaccos, uh, we needed to go out and get the best tobaccos available around the world to have the, the experts in tobacco to bring out the best of all these different flavors to combine and bring unique blends to the market.